Hey, what's going on guys? This is video two of our my indie healthy vending business. Uh, I just want to give you a little update. I just now um, filled my first machine for the second time. Um, switched out a bunch of product. A lot of stuff didn't move. There's some stuff that were sold out, so I just kind of switched it up to help uh, you know see see what's going to happen with this location. And this was a location that's a Monday through Friday eight to five location. So, um, same people, obviously they probably get tired of eating the same stuff. So that's probably why stuff just didn't move eventually. And second day with new product and it's already, um, doing very well, uh, you know, switching up the flavors and stuff. And also, um, if somebody, if you could maybe comment, because I got another location that was given to me, um, not necessarily healthy by any means, uh, they, you know, they want the, uh, energy drinks and Red Bulls and some people said beer <laughs> and cigarettes and um, it's mm, kind of goes against the company uh, I guess mission statement or standard um, and I, I just kind of feel like it's wrong to have a healthy vending machine that says good for you on it um, with that looks healthy um, and then you know put junk food inside of it so if you guys could, you know, maybe comment like what I should do with this location, maybe try to uh, put some junk food in there and some healthy stuff and maybe convert them eventually. Um, it is a logistics company. Um, truck drivers and stuff like that are in and out all the time. Um, you think they would want to eat healthier being that they pretty much sit for eight to 12 hours a day, uh, just driving and not necessarily be active. Um, so yeah, post in, the, post in the comment section what you guys think I should do with that location. Um, I do have some other locations that are brewing, um, maybe looking at maybe signing some contracts with some businesses and I'll have to buy a lot more machines because they pretty much take all of what I have, which is great. Uh, but I have a feeling I'm going through some, going to go through some growing pains if that does come through because there's a lot of locations around me um, that that business could actually use machines that they have none right now. And they're trying to boost their customer uh, morale or just overall experience. And they feel like this might be the thing that might um, be good for their customers since they have no water, coffee, or anything inside of their facilities currently. Um, so, also, I did collect uh, on this machine. Um, I got it in my bag. It looks like I uh, went to the bank and got a bunch of ones. I mean, I could probably stick a hundred dollar bill on top and look, you know, look all uh, important stuff. But uh, it's a stack of fifty ones I got out of cash. But most of it, surprisingly, was actually um, credit. Uh, contactless like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, um, credit card swipes, stuff like that. So that's actually good because that means I don't have to like empty the cash thing out all the time and it just comes straight through and it goes straight to my bank account. I don't have to handle cash and a lot of people know that cash is kind of dirty, especially $1 bills. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I just want to give you a little update. Uh, the first location is doing well. Um, could do better, uh, but you know, it's just getting those locations placed. Um, I did have some people reach out. Um, maybe I don't have the best machine in the world. I don't know. And I probably did overpay. Uh, I do like the remote monitoring software though. Like that is worth the money. Even if I paid $500 for the machine and I paid say $40,000 for software, I would be happy with the software. Um, it is nice to pull it up on my phone to know what the machine's doing, what, you know, pull up transactions. Everything is completely paperless. I don't have to go to the machine to see what's going on inside that machine or what's empty. It sends me a notification, um, an email, which I found out when stuff sold out. I actually started getting emails like, hey, coil boat so and so is out uh, this product. Uh, you might want to refill it and pay attention to the actual machine. Um, but as far as that, you know, it's, it's doing really well um, for having one machine plays. The second one, like I said, um, I would like to get your guys' feedback on what I should do there. Uh, then after that one, if I get, you know, the second one placed, um, I'm looking, you know, to hopefully sign that contract or do something. I'd rather not sign a contract, but get that agreement uh, to put all my machines plus some um, at another location. Uh, so just want to give you a little update. Uh, more stuff to come. I'll eventually start, like I said, showing you um, some transactions and stuff on my computer. Obviously, I have to blur out some stuff because I want you got, you know, personal personal data and stuff like that and I'll show you guys that stuff later on um, you can guys kind of see my dog here hold on maybe I can shift my dog in the background switch this around no no iPhone is not rotating 
So, um, yeah, that's, that's all I have for now. This is video number two, the new healthy vending business. Uh, me and my wife started it. Um, it. It is a legit company with, like I said, LLC, the whole shebang that makes it a true business, tax ID and all that good jazz. It's not like we do anything shady. IRS, we are not doing any sh anything shady. Cash and everything is being tracked. Profit, that would all will be taxed, unfortunately. Um, but if anybody has any way, like IRS, any other way around that, I would love not to have to pay that stuff. Um, but, and hopefully like the, what we researched that these machines, even though I overpaid, they actually do have a kickback. I believe at tax time, I'll let you know when that time comes. Um, my CPA, uh, let me, my CPA told me that, um, it could possibly cover hundred percent of the capital cost of this mach these machines. If that's the case, I don't care if I spend a hundred thousand dollars on the machine. If I get it all back, it's cap a capital asset, hundred percent. It's just like I had a flow some money. So I'll keep you updated. Um, like I said, video two of I don't know how many I'm going to do, but I just want to keep kind of video log going on this. Um, and then I'll start showing you the stuff like that I, you know, are, I'm buying to um, maintain these machines and uh, where I'm sourcing this stuff from and this and that. I ran into a few little roadblocks that I had some stuff, good price. Now they're not carrying it. And I don't know when it'd be back in, so that's kind of why I had to switch out some of the product uh, in the machine already because I couldn't find it. Um, so I'm sure that's the case for some other places. And maybe if somebody has any good ideas um, on sourcing healthy vending options for machines, besides you know your Costco, your Sam's Club, BJ's, Trader Joe's, whatnot, um, or any place that has a sale and stuff, um, I'd really like to find a location that really doesn't have you. Uh, require you to um, a minimum I ran into where companies you have a minimum that you have to um, spend like $500 every two weeks and product that you're getting a great price on them thousand dollars worth of product in a month unless you have a lot of machines you're gonna have a lot of inventory it's either gonna go bad or you're not gonna get it or it's not selling and then you're switching it out and then you either eat those snacks or throw them away or give them away charity or whatnot um, I'm not really looking to lose uh, revenue uh, inventory. So, I mean, the profits aren't that great right now um, because I'm not getting a great price on them. So I can't really just double the price on a lot of this stuff uh, to keep it moving. But all right, well, that's that's all I have for today. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what, what's to come. Thanks.